I grew up very similar to the kids in Lolo and in 1-800-Hot Nights. So both of those movies were inspired by, you know, my life and the, you know, the lives of some of the people that I grew up around. Um, you know, I think I was always a storyteller, uh, just mostly verbal <laughs> growing up. And uh, I grew up uh, with three brothers, so we were always, you know, uh, recording ourselves with a little microphone and the stereo, <laughs> creating little like radio stories for ourselves. And uh, the the path for me actually originated with acting. Huh? I I was acting for about six years in Los Angeles, and then I discovered writing, and and that's when the transition really happened. And I realized I was not an actor, but I was a writer. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. And so then I got into directing, sort of through that yeah. circuitous route. In a few words, how can you describe the movie? One Eight Hundred Hot Night is is a coming of age story about three boys uh, who are, over the course of these few hours, uh, becoming men. They're 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 losing their innocence in these final final few hours, and and it becomes a story about friendship and mm -hmm. love and and. Um, Responsibility. Which scene was the most difficult to shoot and why? <laughs> good question. Yeah, yeah good question. <laughs> uh, the most difficult scene to shoot was probably the final scene at the power lines. Yeah, okay. Uh, so many things went wrong that night. Uh, <laughs> we, we, uh, we had very limited time. Uh, there was um, a man who was yelling. Okay. Off. That was not part of it, so he was messing up the shots. Uh, we lost the keys to our production truck, so we couldn't move it. Things nah. just kind of kept going wrong. So, uh, and it was a, a very emotional scene. So that was probably the that was the most difficult, most complications. What can you tell us about the inspiration of this movie? We thought about some 80s movies as Stand by Me. Yeah, well, you know, those I grew up on movies like Stand by Me and. And uh, you know, I loved the honesty of them. They felt like like they were a real expose into the world um, of these kids. And I wanted to do that also. I wanted to make a film that uh, could be somewhat of an homage to those types of movies, with a modern take on it, and and challenge myself to tell you know the stories of these kids and their youth. What can you tell us about the collaboration on this film with Dallas Hume, Marlene Bradford, and Ali Reche that you have already worked on your first movie? Yeah, so you know, with Ali, it's great because she's we're married, <laughs> so so we have a collaboration sort of every day at home, and we work together on every part of the film, from the the first pages of the screenplay up to the shot list, and she's always there with me uh, to collaborate. The boys, Dallas and, and Mylon, you know, this is the first time I've worked with them. Um, I knew they were the right people for the film mm -hmm. from the very first casting session. And um, they, this was both of their first feature films. So they were so professional. You know, they always had their lines memorized. They were just ready to go <laughs> all the time. And, and it was, it, it made it so easy for me to work with all three of them. Yeah. What can you tell us about your filming location in Los Angeles? Well, It was really tough, you know, with a movie as low budget as ours, you are looking for every every uh, advantageous, you know, opportunity. And in this case, um, I drove all around Los Angeles for weeks looking for the right places, looking, knocking on doors. And, and uh, so we shot all around Los Angeles, from okay. deep in the valley to the ocean, you know. Um, and... It was important to me, though, that the locations didn't feel too much like Los Angeles. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to see the Hollywood sign. Yeah, popular place. Not, yeah. not a bunch of palm trees. It was a little more, yeah. you know, a little more general. What should be for you a good acting direction? Wait, sorry. Did you... What should be for you a good acting direction? Like? I do you work with the actors and must know all the prior sentences? You have you wait some ideas from them yeah. to, to act, something like that? So basically the way that I like to work with the actors on the directing side is I like to start with the script and talking yeah. to them and asking them why their character is making the decision that the character is making. I think that helps the actor internalize their, you know, their motives in the film. Yeah. And then it helps me get some in perspective in their brains, you know. Um, and then when I'm there on set, you know, part of it is 
I'm looking for things that they're using for crutches that, yeah. that um, are stopping them from maybe being truthful in the moment. Mm -hmm. So if I see, for example, Ali, maybe she's biting her lip, but that's something she does as Ali, not as the character. And if yeah. I see that in the film, I know I can go up to her and just say, hey, I don't want you to bite your lip. Yeah. And a different performance comes out because she's letting go of that physical yeah. thing. And so I try to find those things for each of the actors that to me are kind of like levers I can pull and it steers them in this in this other direction and um, you know again the whole time always making sure that you know that they're feeling like it's honest for them that they're telling the truth on screen what have you written for the first movie for this movie oh sorry say that again. what did you written to make the first movie for this movie Maybe some ideas, maybe to, to put your camera somewhere for something like that. Yeah. Because it's just your second movie. So yeah. you have more, uh, you have better approach than the first one. For me, this was mostly, the, the big difference for me in this yeah. was really spending more time for myself in pre-production, mm -hmm. shot listing with my cinematographer. Okay. Going to those locations and making maps mm -hmm. and really looking down and saying, okay, this is what, you know, what we're going to have to do. Um, I felt like this time I was much more intimately involved in that process mm -hmm. and willing mm -hmm. to take some more creative risks. Your movie opens this year at the Deauville American Film Festival. What are your feelings about that? This is, <laughs> this is like the Dream Come True <laughs> Festival. Yeah, you nice. know, it was truly my, my dream for this film to premiere here. I, that's, I pictured it, I told, I told the cast, I told yeah. the crew, <laughs> I want us to play in Deauville. Yeah. So to have been selected, For this festival is the biggest honor for us. We're, we're this is there's nowhere else in the world we would rather be. <laughs> nice. Do you have some uh, French actor that you would like to work with? Oh yeah. <laughs> Which ones? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> I mean, I love I love Vincent Cassel. Yeah, Vincent Cassel. Amazing. Yeah. Um, there's there's okay. So I grew up watching Green Card. I love Gerard Depardieu. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Way way back then. <laughs> uh, um, there's I just saw. Um, Titan. Titan, yeah. And the lead actress is here on the jury. Uh, yeah. She's spectacular. <laughs> yeah. She's an amazing actor. So there's like, I'm trying to think of, of uh, uh, oh, well, <laughs> everyone wants to work with Marion Cotillard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's a <laughs> Who doesn't work with her? <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, those are, those are some actors that I've, you know, you know, some are like legendary, obviously, but yeah. uh, even like, You know, I think of, I, I, I once got, I went to a dinner in Los Angeles that was for strangers. So yeah. strangers came and, see, yeah. and they set me next to Jean Reno. Jean Reno, yeah, yeah. Good one. Yeah, no, he's like, and I love him too. I don't know, you know, wow. so, yeah. And my last question, why are your current projects? So right now I have a film called Jack Ricky. Mm -hmm. It's my next feature film I'd like to be directing in March of this next year, so mm -hmm. spring. Um, it's about a lesbian couple in Oklahoma okay. that uh, they kidnap a boy, he's like mm -hmm. 14 years old, but they're really rescuing the boy, yeah. and they're on this road trip to take him to Corpus Christi, Texas, and the boy's father is chasing after them, so it's kind of a Thelma and Louise, or uh, yeah. like true romance, it's got danger, but it's a road trip movie mm -hmm. about these these two women and this boy kind of becoming a family as they go on nice. the road trip. so that's the next, next film for me, okay. and then I actually... Uh, just finished writing a, my first horror film. Uh, nice. So I have like a, a big kind of action horror film that I, I want to make. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.